Hey everybody, it's Miss Bailey from Sing to Kids, and I wanted to show you Chrome Music Lab. This is a uh, website that you can access for free, and you can send the link out to your students and let them explore and then play a little bit as well. There are eight different apps as you can see here Songmaker, Rhythm, Spectrogram, Chords, Sound Waves, Arpeggios, Kandinsky and Melody Maker. I've been playing a lot today with Song Maker and thinking about how I could use it with students. And I'd love to just show you around for a moment. So you can see everything is done by graphs. This uh, thick line here in the middle, I kind of think of your melody being uh, up here, so that would be the right hand of the piano. Down here would be the left hand of the piano, and that would take a little you know, explanation for kids to know and understand. Down here we have the play button. You can choose different instruments here. You can choose, again, different sounds. Increase your tempo. Uh, and what I love about Songmaker specifically is that whatever melody you make, you can save. So think about that for a moment. If you were assigning this to students in Google Classroom, then they could save their work and send it back to you, and you would be able to play students' melodies to hear what they have been doing. And so one of the things I thought about doing is sending some melodies to my students and letting them play with harmony, letting them identify melodies for themselves, and then asking them to create a melody back. And what I did is I went in and just started uh, saving different pieces. So I'm going to pull up Hot Cross Buns. And you can see the, here's the melody part. Now I saved this a couple different ways with melody and then with harmony. So here's my melody. Down here is my harmony. And my third graders are doing piano uh, work right now with me. So this for third grade is why I have the harmony there because they're already thinking about uh, tonic and dominant chord roots. So this is do, this is so, and how left hand and right hand fits into piano. So if that's more advanced than what your students are doing, that's totally fine. Just let them play with the melody. But I wanted to play this for you so you could hear what this sounded like. So here we go. I'm going to go back to, I don't want to go. All right, here it is. Now, the one thing that's a little bit challenging about this is that uh, you have to play around a little bit with your rests and your tempo. It's not an exact science, so uh, it's a little bit different to, um, to play around with. But again, it's a really neat thing for students to see. Uh, I'm going to go back into this one. Again, you can just click. And do you notice that these tabs or these buttons here all correspond to the color coding that we use with our boom whackers, the color codings that, that we use with our bells. So if you have any materials that are already color coded for your students, like I'm thinking about my second graders, we just did a pirate song and everything was color coded when they played. Well, this corresponds beautifully to that. And you can, again, sign those assignments to kids and have them go into SongMaker and play around with it. And I think they'll love just the exploration piece of uh, trying different timbres, trying different tempos, and things like that. I'm going to go back out into the main menu. Rhythm is another interesting thing to look at. I'm still playing with ideas in my mind for this. So as I'm looking at rhythm, I can hit the play button. So I'm just going to show you the first one that, that it defaults to. <coughs> Each one of these dots represents a sound I can add. So right now, I can add. So I think the kids will have a lot of fun exploring with that. But in terms of creating maybe a four beat rhythm pattern, which is what I wanted in my mind, that may not be the best use of this. But again, if you go into different things, now you can see we have something that looks a little bit closer to a four beat. But if you listen to the default rhythm, so now if I start to add things,
you can begin to play a little bit more. So there are lots of different choices you can uh, mess around with in here. I love that there are different instruments for each one. I'll play a little excerpt. Uh, oh, excuse me about that, but thank you, whoever you are. And uh, just a fun little thing to explore rhythm with your students. And um, I wish there was a save function for this again, so that with my lower L kids, they could create some rhythms for me and send it to me. But if there's not, no big deal. It's just great exploration to get them thinking. Spectrogram, I think, is a really cool thing if you've done a science of sound unit and you just want to expose them to what sound looks like physically. Isn't that beautiful and it's peaceful and there are multiple instruments to choose from. But the one I really thought about was this one because I thought about vocal exploration and getting our little ones to go into head voice and how they could draw. And then go ahead and sing that back. Uh, and just play with some vocal warm up that way um, each morning. So I thought that was a really neat thing to play with as well. Uh, chords, meh, not too impressed with this one. So if I press on a key, I get that major chord. If I switch it to minor, I get the minor chord. The problem is uh, if your kids aren't looking at keys and know where a C is, know where a G is, and can translate it into uh, one, four, five, or tonics of dominant, dominant, this probably isn't going to do a lot for them, but it's a neat thing to look at. And again, let them play around with. Um, sound waves is another one that's here. Again, just looking at how sound is physically represented. I like that if you go ahead and go into this, you can see those sound waves. Uh, and just let them see that physical representation of sound. Arpeggios, another neat little thing just to look at. You can click on something and hear the full chord, but what I liked is if you hit play, you can see the arpeggio being played. So again, they get that physical um, or that visual uh, of the arpeggio, but then they show you different kinds of arpeggios for that C chord as well. So again, I think that's a neat thing to let your kids explore with. And again, you can try different instruments uh, just by clicking down on the other button. You can change tempo. So a neat little thing to look at. Kandinsky is another one that I was thinking, if you have used iPads in your classroom and maybe have singing fingers, this might be a really neat connection for those kids who love singing fingers. Now, not in the sense that they get to sing and make noise as they're drawing, but what I loved about this is that you could go on and draw. Different things and then play. And then it loops it. So then, you know, again, you can have a little conversation about looping and, uh, and have kids explore drawing uh, sound there. So that's something I would happily send to my kids. And then Melody Maker is kind of like Song Maker, just only looking at melody, not uh, melody and harmony together. So I could again, uh, go in and play hot cross buns. This is, I'm thinking closet key, so I can have them go ahead and play. The only thing about this is it's a very small sample, so they couldn't get an entire melody. They could only get maybe a phrase in there. And that's why I like that song maker better because they can get the whole song in there and they can save it for me. So students could uh, write out a song that's familiar to them, play with that. They could put harmony to a song that's familiar to them, or they could create their own and send it to me. So I just wanted to walk you through uh, um, the Music Lab for Chrome and let you see what was available to your students. And uh, it would certainly be something to send out to parents as a little exploration activity um, as we're all uh, social distancing from one another. Thanks so much for hanging out with me.